Hello and welcome to the channel, or welcome back if you're so inclined. In today's video, we're taking a look at this. It's the Black Shark V2X from Razer. Now this is the entry level to the Black Shark V2 series. X is normally the moniker reserved for extreme. But Razer have gone the opposite. They've kept it nice and clean. This is the entry level and it comes in at a cool $60 or 60 pounds UK. Funny how that works. Anyway, let's move on. We'll take a look and see what it's like. Now let's take a look at the design. The first thing that stands out to me is this looks remarkably similar to the V2 Pro, which it should. It's all of the same range. However, looks are where those similarities sadly end. If you listen, it's very rattly. The build quality has definitely taken a bit of a hit from the V2 Pro to uh, give those cost cuttings onto you, I would suspect. But we'll start with the top. So I do like the Razer embossed logo across the top of the headband, the, uh, the leverette headband, that is. And the padding on the inside is remarkably plush. However, it does feel like after a good six, seven months or so, this padding will become a bit, I don't want to say rubbish, but it'll become a bit hard and a bit more firm on the head, which shouldn't be massive issue to be fair, because this headset is remarkably light. It's very, very light indeed. Now. Moving down from the actual headband itself, we've got these spindle arms, which are across the range for the V2s. Now, on the V2 Pro, these are quite stiff and they do lock in place rather well, but on these, they just don't. They feel rather flimsy. And I, I think that's because the plastic used on the housing for these is a cheaper plastic. The texture is definitely different than the one on the higher end headsets, but it doesn't pick up dust. It doesn't pick up marks. So fair play to that. I do like this green cable that connects the actual headband to the ear cup itself. Now this is very lovely. If you do pull it too tight, you can feel that there is definite tension there. And I do fear that this could break at some point. However, you would be trying hard to break it. It must it must be an effort or, or a foolish mistake at that point to actually break this. But it does look kind of cool. I like the green cable. Now the microphone on these doesn't detach. And I've mentioned in previous videos, I don't mind that. It means you can't actually lose it. And it is rather big. It is a, a super cardioid mic, I think. I don't think this one's hyper clear like it is on the V2 Pro, but it is a rather big mic and you do get the pop filter with it. Now, the drivers on these, they say, are they at the Triforce drivers, which Razer have apparently broken the laws of physics and taken one solid driver and made it move in three independent ways, which I, like I said, I feel is only possible through sorcery. In the world of physics, however, it is kind of a good idea what they've done. They do try and separate the audio up, which we'll look more at on the actual audio test itself, because it does come with its own little issues. But the headset itself, the design is pretty good. The materials are cheap, but this thing comes in at 60 pounds or 60 USD, so you kind of expect that. I'm not overly fussed. The ear cups still remain an inch deep, which is good. However, there's no padding over the driver itself. So if your ear does touch the inside of this, you can definitely, definitely feel the texture. And the material over the top feels remarkably cheap, like it will just rip away. But the ear cups, Although they are leverette around the outside, they do have this nice velour on the inside to keep it nice and cozy on your ears. But after a good few hours, they do get remarkably hot. But you can, in fact, change these ear cups. Like so. Not quite as easy as on the Astros where it's just a magnet, but you get this lovely little overlay here that goes back in remarkably simply. So the headset itself in terms of design, pretty good. The weight is very light, but I think that's just a byproduct of cheaper products. And it looks okay. I like the look of these headsets. I really do. I don't necessarily like the look of the green cable that always, always is attached. And there is more to this cable, by the way, which we'll come on to shortly in accessories. But overall on the design, quite pleased. It's quite well put together for the price. Yeah, well done, Razer. Well done. Now the microphone set's gonna be slightly different today as this is a wired mic. I can't actually use the cable to get it all the way to the set. So I'm showing the Razer website. Well, this part specifically which shows the difference between a super cardioid mic and a normal cardioid. This is in fact a super cardioid mic. Now what's interesting on this website is down at the bottom you can actually play and hear the difference between a, a hyper clear cardioid mic and a normal super cardioid. All of that good stuff from Razer themselves. But anyway it does give you a nice little chart as to the pickup pattern but judge for yourself I think this mic is okay. It definitely has that nasally sound to it but as a a 60 pound headset. I wouldn't expect anything better than this, to be honest. I think it's rather good. It's very clear, very crisp. Anyway, there we are, moving on. Now the drivers on this headset are 50 millimeter Triforce drivers, not the Triforce Titanium, which is on the V2s and the V2 Pros, just Triforce without the Titanium. That must make it worse somehow. However, the drivers on these, Razer say, separates the audio into treble, mid and bass by simply 
manipulating how the driver itself works. Now it's physically not possible to make a driver act as three independent aspects. However, as you can see on the image, you can manipulate the chambers beneath. Now I'm not sure what the uh, multicolored swirly things are. I stopped reading when I saw that picture, but in a nutshell in the audio, you do feel quite good separation. You know, you can tell, it is there. The audio is quite precise, but this headset is not very loud. That's one thing I've noticed. And when listening to music, you can tell that the volume is just lacking. There's just not that additional bit of power that you feel that these uh, drivers actually have. But they are pretty good at separating audio up. I wouldn't use the 7.1 surround. It makes it a very, very muddy mess. However, the stereo itself, for the price point, is really, really quite good. But anyway, I'll back off for a little moment. Yeah, there we are. The audio and stereo is very good. Like I said, for this price point, you're not going to get much better than this. I just wish you could have more power, more force, more volume to it, but sadly that's not the case. Anyway, moving on. So let's take a look at the accessories and features that do come with this headset. Now, whether it's been a wired headset, you tend not to get a great deal like you do with wireless ones, but you do. Like the rest of this range, get a little dust protector slash carry case from Razer. Now it has been pointed out to me previously that I mentioned it doesn't have the Razer logo on. I was wrong, and you were right, it does, it's right there. Black on black, it says Razer at the bottom, and you get the green tassels to really drive home that this is a Razer product. But I can't imagine that this added any cost whatsoever to the headset, because this thing is pathetic. Anyway, moving on, we get some paperwork from Razer, the obligatory stuff, and that's a thrilling read, I'm sure. And you get this, which I'm sure is a joke from Razer. I tried it. It's uh, a little thing. You scratch off the silver at the bottom, get a code, and you can download your audio experience. It says here, unlock your head, unlock, sorry, your headset's full potential now. I tried it. It's shockingly bad. It tries to put 7.1 audio on a 60 pound headset. It doesn't work, believe it or not. It's uh, remarkably poor. It just ruined the experience. Don't do that. Don't waste your time. Just stick with stereo. It's a far superior experience. Now we also get this. This is a splitter, to so take this from a four pole connector that you can use on the back of a, a console control pad normally, to this, two separate two pole ones. So we've got the mic and the, well, the line in and the line out. So you simply connect this to this, which makes this cable extraordinarily long. Look at this, it's, it's almost 10 feet long. Now I don't sit 10 feet away from my computer and if I'm using a wired headset, I'm not expecting to be getting up and walking around with the headset on. So I'm not entirely sure why 10 feet of cable especially a cable that's not braided and literally tangles up at the first breath of movement. But yeah, you get it, there you are. I've run over this on my chair. I'm sure others have as well. It's uh, pointless, absolutely pointless. And sadly for me, I game on PC, so I don't actually have a connector that I'll just take this, which would be lovely. I'm sure I do on the back of my motherboard, but this cable itself is only four feet. So if I did want to use it on my PC, I would have to sit remarkably close, uh, just to accommodate for the cable stretching everywhere. On console, however, this is the perfect length. I would say for me, sit with it nicely in your hands. See, I mentioned this thing keeps popping up. Nicely in your hands, like that, nice and easy, but 10 feet to sit at your computer, uh, Razer is uh, frankly stupid, to be honest. But anyway, there you are, the accessories and features of a cheap headset. Beautiful stuff, let's move on. So in conclusion, one of my thoughts towards the Razer Black Shark V2X. Honestly, at this price point, it's an absolute steal. At 60 US dollars or 60 pounds in the UK, it's an absolute winner. I'd never recommend buying wireless at this price because the bulk of the cost of that will have gone on the wireless receiver. Whereas this, all of the cost has gone into the headset itself. As I mentioned, the audio experience is pretty good. Yes, it's not too loud, but the audio is quite clear. It's quite precise. Don't use the 7.1, that's an absolute travesty on this headset. It is good enough in stereo. But yeah, I absolutely recommend this. I think for the price, it's a brilliant headset. Well done, Razer. I'm not too sure about the 10 foot cable, however, that is remarkably stupid. But still, at this price point, I don't care. I don't care. Well done, Razer. Now, if you did like this video, you know, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Um, if you've watched this far in and you didn't like it, well, uh, thank you for the watch time, I suppose, and I'm sorry I couldn't entertain you. I will have a link to this product in the description below. Um, that will be my Amazon affiliate link. Buying from there does contribute to the channel in a small way and all that money does get reinvested to getting more products to review. But yeah, thanks very much for watching everyone. I hope you have a, a wonderful evening, morning, lunchtime, wherever you are in the world. Goodbye.